Good evening and welcome to In Conversation. And um, my guest this evening is a really, really good friend of mine, uh, Simeon. Simeon is a minister in uh, Taunton and the Assemblies of God Church, uh, Cannon Street, right next to the cricket ground, um, if you want to find out what that is. Um, but yeah, so Sim, so grateful that you've been able to join me for uh, In Conversation with Thanks for having me, Mark. It's uh, good to be with you, and uh, yeah, look look forward to to uh, chatting. So thank you. Absolutely, mate. And for for those who don't know, I, I mean, I've shared with a couple of um, those um, who have been watching. Um, I I'm a bit of a social guy. I like to um, have relationship and friendships with lots of um, with with my friends. Um, so Sim is, is one of the guys that we normally try and put a date in the diary to meet up for a, a big breakfast or a nice lunch somewhere. Um, yeah. And just have time with just a fellowship and encourage one another and to, um, just to, just to bless one another, just to spend that time and, and share. Um, and I think just before actually COVID, we would message to try and arrange a date to do that. Um, I remember. Yeah, we did. But, yeah, we had, um, some stuff get in the way and, and then COVID happened. But um, yeah, we, we worked out a few places in between um, Dorchester and Taunton. So um, yeah, we've done that before. Absolutely. Trying to see how many places we can eat in Yeovil before uh, we've, we've, <laughs> we've, 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 uh, we've tried them all. Um, so Sim, for maybe um, some of our church regulars will, um, will recognise you. Um, you spoke um, at my church last year. And brought a really, really um, great word to us. And maybe for those who um, uh, who aren't um, watching, uh, who aren't regulars, sorry, maybe watching that aren't regulars, um, so give us a little bit about yourself. Maybe in a couple of minutes, just a, a little bit um, about you. Um, I don't. I hate these questions, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I'm married, happily married, and um, basically, I, it's because I don't think my life's that interesting but uh, maybe it is to someone else. I've got three um, rapidly grown children. Um, so I adopted them when we got married and um, one's at uni. The other is graduated as a social worker and um, the other's at um, college uh, or will be, it's holidays now, obviously. Um, and also foster parents. So we um, had a brother and sister, um, last october that's our first placement or second placement we did have a teenage girl um, who was pregnant as well so uh, we're fairly new into the fostering journey um but that's something we felt we we wanted to do we we felt we were called into it if you like and um so there are some challenges leading up to that and uh, i think you visited us mark um last year sort of in the middle of the one of those challenging sort of times and uh, <laughs> I think I yeah. when um, your car had just broken down, we were supposed to have yeah. lunch together, and it was yeah. a kind of challenging transition stage of um, getting stuff in place and meeting and 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 stuff like that. Um, and I remember, um, yeah, we had a really really short amount of lunch <laughs> together <laughs> because you had to get back to. Um, to help your wife who was waiting for the uh, recovery guy to come and help you out. Um, yeah. 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 It was a bit of a, a bit of a funny, funny old day, but yeah, no. Um, I got part of really, um, we talked I talk, talk earlier on about that relationship and doing life together and sharing. Um, I would consider you one of my closest mates in the ministry where we did our training together. Um, yeah. Assembly of God. Um, I met you, um, you remember you leading worship in one of um, those, those days it was a probationary ministers training course um, yeah. in worship um, for the meeting that we were at in, in Somerton at the time. They must have been desperate, eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was really, really good. That's what I can remember. <laughs> um, and I've heard you lead worship a couple of times since that. So, But yeah, it was, um, yeah, we, we met, it would have been about, God, seven years ago now, would it be? It's probably scary how long it is. Um, but yeah, your maths is better than mine, so um, I'm it trying, must be I'm just, trying to, just trying to work it out because I was ordained four years ago. You just um, reminded me just before we came on to film that you um, beat me to the post and you got your ordination a year before me. 
But I remember there'd been like a, I was on, I, my course ended up being over three years because um, they, they t- decided to change the course as I, as I kind of started it. I was about yeah. to start and embark on all the essays that probably you had to do. And then I did then. Did, yeah. Yeah, I did, I did the yeah. DVDs. So I think I got the better deal. Um, <laughs> to be fair so um yeah it's about, it's about seven years um we've, um, we've known each other uh, so wow, wow. It's pretty no, it's a pleasure mark you inspire me and uh yeah you uh you're a great guy so thank you for your friendship i do value value you is it as i likewise you um, you inspire me and just what you just shared just a minute ago about kind of the the journey that you and karen are now on um and fostering we'll touch on that a little bit later but Mate, I could have been sure. a better couple um, to do that and to serve God um, in doing that and, and bringing hope and love into into kids' lives. That's just absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, thank you. So let's talk about kind of being a church leader. Obviously, um, you lead a church in, in Taunton, in Somerset. I lead a church in God's County in Dorset. Um, <laughs> and so, um, and we kind of, the, our journey actually started around the same time, didn't it? I think you you just moved into Taunton a few months or before I came into Dorchester. So kind of we both went through a bit of a a, a journey. You were the associate leader and then the leader, previous leader left. I was the associate leader with my father-in-law and, um, and then he left and I took over. So how was, let's talk about that for a little bit before we go into COVID-19 because it's too made in now. I don't really want to talk about it too much. Um, let's talk about times when we could gather together and have meetings and stuff like that. So um, you transitioned, didn't you, from um, associate to, to senior leader, um, similar to me. Yeah. Um, so how did your transition go um, with, with, with that? Was it a smooth one or was there bumps in the road that you had to navigate through? Yeah, so the previous pastors... Um, they they were good friends as well as kind of our, our senior leaders, I guess. Um, and I I had known it was public knowledge that they felt called to um, Cambodia. Actually, um, they they also had children at university, and I thought uh, mistakenly that they would wait for them to kind of go through that whole process and kind of graduate, and then they might move on at some point after that to um, warmer climates. Um, but actually that didn't happen and um, they moved fairly quickly so it was a bit of a shock um, in some ways when um, we had the conversation Um, so but the good thing was we had nine months to to plan Um, so I felt we had a good transition Um, so we we tried to be as intentional as we could and and um, Matthew would hand over responsibility to me gradually more and more. He would make it clear that, um, you know, and we had we had meetings with the whole church and stuff. So, so they kind of affirmed the decision. But then there was this process of kind of handing, handing over slowly, bit by bit, um, responsibility and um, everything else that, that comes with that. So by the time we had our handover service, um, sort of nine months later um i mean i don't think you ever feel prepared i don't know how you feel but um i think in terms of transition i think we did pretty well i'm not quite sure how we could have done better um but yeah i'm you i don't think you ever feel ready do you really uh it's it's a strange one i my last in conversation with was with my father-in-law and we had a Mm. talk about it um and i kind of pressed him what did he do on his first Sunday after mm. he retired from church leadership because you never retire from ministry um but no. when he stepped away from the senior leader role as, as the um, as the minister of the storehouse church I think he went for a bike ride or a walk or something like that and yeah <laughs> that preparation and, and and being ready it felt the first kind of half an hour hour into the service um, it just felt like I was watching the church as the associate because Pete was on holiday again for that first yeah, week. Yeah, it felt really yeah. weird until I kind of shared a little bit. I it was, I came in, in in July three years ago um, and um, that July had five Sundays in. And I remember mm-hmm. I bookended um, July from the, the first and the, and the end of the month and I had three guest speakers in. So by the, by the end of July, I, there was a change and there was a shift. Not that yeah. I, 
I think you say say I don't think you can be ever fully prepared or be ready um, yeah and I think you look at the disciples and they were with Jesus for three and a half years and they went and made mistakes <laughs> as soon as yeah, he that's true. so it wasn't it was like yeah um, they'd had the greatest teacher and master show them and then all of a sudden they go like, oh what we just yeah got they, even, even I, there so <laughs> I think the, the beauty of of kind of being and, and understanding and hearing the call of God is actually we're realizing leading a church isn't all about us it is, no. it's not our responsibility our sole responsibility that Jesus calls us to co-labor with him he's yeah. the one who builds the church and we have the privilege of leading churches and leading people and communities of God to to serve him and to extend his kingdom um, and yeah. everyone is called to, to minister unto him. Everyone's called to give an account, yeah. be a witness. Um, we just have the honour and the responsibility um, of leading his people and being co-shepherds, under shepherds with him um, mm. to, to, to watch the flock and feed the lambs. So yeah, preach it, Mark. That's good. Um, I think also in the run up to my transition. So I, I started September. Um, so officially it would have been the first of September was my starting day. That was probably a Saturday, I think, something like that. But in, in that couple of weeks running up to it, I was trying to wind up my business, a self-employed um, fitting wood burning stoves. And it so happened that my my heat ass registration ran out at the end of August. Wow. So I had about five jobs because I was trying to cram it all in. And so I was just ridiculously busy in the run up to it because I had to sign all the jobs off before the deadline and stuff like that. And I, I didn't actually manage it. I, I kind of missed the deadline on a couple of those jobs, but it was kind of this crazy, on the one hand, it was a, it was a good transition from church perspective, personal perspective. It was, it was a bit more complicated, a little bit crazy, but um, there we got there. But but God's timing in that as well, mate. Like, um, yeah, almost your your certificate coming to an end, and you have yeah. been into your new role, and um, that yeah. new and similar to me. I when I when I started here, I um, I just um, I was still working for Boots, right? <laughs> so um, I kind of transitioned during my my training period um, from being a store manager. I started when I was. Um, as a store manager my training period by the time I finished my training period I'd stopped being a store manager I was a relief dispenser I was working full-time I was then working um, less than that um, and I'm, yeah. paid, I'm paid by the church but served in at, the, at that time um, yeah and then and then stepped into this role and um, really given the last three years I mean I don't know how many hours I've done because the first kind of year I took over I was clocking up 50, 60 hour weeks and I was yeah. paid 50, 60 hour weeks. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's just what you do to, to serve and to, and to give God mm -hmm. and, and kind of you, you put that in, don't you, to not for people to notice, but you put it in because God's called you in. And I, yeah. was having, I remember having a conversation with somebody once and they said, oh, it's all right for pastors. They're on 40 grand a week and not doing a lot. I was like, well, what church is that? And, <laughs> Have they got an application form? Because <laughs> it's, it's not like that at all. It's uh, yeah. it's honor him, honoring him, serving him, um, being there when when people are um, at the lowest of the lows and the highest of the highs, mm -hmm. and navigating that spiritual journey um, that people are on, and, and being there to help and support. Um, but that's just yeah. just God's timing um, for, for you. Just. Absolutely. So. And I think in terms of leadership, I sometimes describe it as though we're we're a bus driver and we've got a load of people behind us but at the same time we're trying to put the bus together you know mechanically so we're kind of a, a, a chief mechanic we're the driver at the same time people are asking well where are we going and you're like well I don't really know but we're heading in this direction I think and so there's there's all those different roles and aspects and, and dynamics and it's it's kind of hard to to build the thing as you go like you say none of us comes into it feeling 100% prepared it's kind of it's a step of faith in in many ways and um, you know I certainly was conscious of this big owl plate on my head um, much of the time um, and yet God calls you into it he you know um, uh, there's a saying that I'm trying to think of but he he prepares those who are called rather than you know calling the prepared um, so yeah it's it's all about his grace, isn't it? His empowerment and uh, his faithfulness, really, not ours. 
absolutely and, and realizing that we um we are so reliant on him in all that we do we yeah we plan and we we prepare and as if it all depends on us but at the end of the yeah. day god's like yeah i've got this <laughs> it's yeah. just like just do your bit do do what i've called you to do and and just watch me do the rest and yeah i think as leaders and i love that analogy about being on the bus um trying to get the mot done while you're uh, yeah. <laughs> while, while, while you're doing a service and you've got yeah. people on the bus as well at the same time um yeah i think i, I think that's the thing so as, as church leaders we're leading churches part of the, the global church um but actually the church is the vehicle that god uses to extend his kingdom and it's all about being kingdom minded and yeah I've had um, I've had the privilege of, of preaching in your church a couple of times, um, and you've got a great um, bunch of people, great congregation, um, yeah. lots of really good characters, and lots of great guys, <laughs> men and women who are faithful, um, yeah, and have been part of that journey with you and, and transitioning. How did um, you feel that the transition went um, from? you stepping up from number two and obviously Matthew and Matthew's a great guy. Matthew was my, um, and I think it might have been yours at the same time. Um, during our training period, we had uh, somebody we had to re report to, I think for the first yeah. year, Matthew was That's my true. guy that I had to re report to. And Matthew yeah. is, is a fantastic guy. How did, how did you feel that the church responded to, um, you stepping in from, uh number two into number one how how did that go and how how was that dynamic so I'll, I'll i'll go for me first um because it's easier and then you might be able to steal some of my answers um but i uh, always, good. always good i remember it being quite quite challenging for some people um and um, when pete announced that he was leaving um and we were on the our old constitution and old um, trustee so they had to vote for me to be the next pastor that's how old the trustee was um yeah because the associate the trustees wanted it to happen um but they had to go to vote the church and i got a unanimous decision like 90 90 something percent um that's um, pretty good it was pretty good pretty pretty pleasing to know that the church you <laughs> were in for to have been part of for 10 years actually um to be the, the pastor um but also um i remember pete sharing that he's had a couple of conversations with people who couldn't understand why he was leaving couldn't understand why he was stepping down at that time but couldn't then understand get their heads around why he was leaving um the church and obviously he didn't move to cambodia like um mm. the previous um, leader did um mm. but for, for the church it I felt that it took some people a little while to stop seeing me as the associate and to see me as a leader. Did you kind of feel something similar to that? Or, or? Yeah, I think, well, I didn't, I didn't quiz people on it directly, but I think there were, there were obvious similarities, but there are obvious differences between us in terms of gifting and fairly similar characters, but, you know everyone does things in different ways so um i think it helped that um there were some people who spoke into um our lives and said you know matthew had one pair of shoes and they were beautiful shoes and they were made to fit him and god's got a different pair of shoes for you and um you know it's going to look different but he's going to adjust people's expectations to that um, I would say, actually, in many ways, um, Karen, my wife, probably struggled more um, being more different from Matthew's wife. Um, so I think she's felt more keenly um, people's expectations um, than I have. I think I've I kind of maybe I had more. I was preoccupied. I could get on with stuff. I didn't think about it too much, although you're always conscious of your sort of weaknesses. Um, I think um, she struggled a bit more than me. Um, I have to say that by and large, uh, our people have been very good, very welcoming. Um, but there's perhaps always a, inevitably a kind of a honeymoon period. I purposefully didn't um, change a huge amount in the first year. Um, I wanted to keep things the same because they were done that way for a reason. And I also was just buying time to kind of think through what our what our vision was 
and the sort of direction we were going in. So I kind of kept activities largely unchanged, largely unchanged schedule for pretty much a year. Wow. And then I started to introduce far more changes. Um, so I think I grew into the role um, far, you know, much more as time went on. And I would say that's, that's still true. That's still the case. Um, I feel more equipped now than I did even six months ago, a year ago. That's so I, I guess it's, again, it's God's faithfulness and, and trusting in him to, to lead and to, to build us up um, as we go along. So um, does that answer your question? I'm not that, I think mate, That's brilliant. And I love the analogy that you used about the word that was spoken over you about um, Matthew having a pair of shoes and you have a pair of shoes. And that's yeah. kind of um, what I felt that I, I, I didn't need to step and be uh, and operate in the way that Pete did. I can't wear his shoes for, for what he yeah. is. Uh, God, God had called me for leading this church at a time and a season. And um, yeah, I can't fit into someone else's shoes. Um, but I can, no. I can ask God to be on the journey with me and, and walk beside me and lead me in the journey that he's got for me now. And um, yeah, that mate, that's just, that's just, that's brilliant. That really kind of, that just echoes kind of similarities to, to what, um, to what I had. Um, yeah. So you lead in a church um, like me and um, on the 23rd of March, Boris Johnson announces uh, that the country is in lockdown. I love that little little laugh. Um, he uh, he, uh, he announces that church that church, uh, the whole country is in lockdown. How did um, how did you as a church kind of respond to that and and then navigate? What have you been doing since lockdown to to to, to um, communicate with you with you guys to do services? What what have you been doing? Yeah, we've we've done a few things. Um, I've probably been quite slow in some respects, um, but that's partly just my character. I tend to, I'm perhaps a little bit cautious, tend to think through too much before I do anything. But we, we've got there eventually. I think one of the hardest things was actually knowing when to, was seeing this decision coming and knowing when we're going to shut. So once that stress was out of the way, we could then um, look at different formats and ways of, of trying to maintain togetherness and community um we so i tried various things and um obviously ringing around people and researching you know best platforms and there's there's loads of choice out there so that was that was quite um i struggle with choice sometimes just give me a couple options and I'm, it's easier you know I know, I think, I think, instead of an android you know what I mean? There's just too many options, Android, and there's <laughs> just get an iPhone and you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. I think I remember actually I've, I've I've had lunch with you a couple of times, and the minute you go past a certain number of things on the menu, I can just see your eyes yeah. just glaze over. So it's always yeah. the first thing that you go for. Keep, keep it simple. Keep yeah. it simple. Yeah, it's just, yeah. The meatball marinara, isn't it, Subway, that you just go for? That's, that's, that's Yeah, I just, I don't know what it is. I just keep settling on that. Uh, <laughs> but just too messy. I end up with it all over my face. So you, um, so you, you had lots of choices to go through in, in options. What, 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 what did you settle on? What, what are you doing as, as, as church? Yeah, I mean, it's partly down to, um, I'm not particularly technical. I don't enjoy that aspect of... Um, <laughs> kind of IT so I struggle with that and we haven't actually um, got many people or, or any people to help with that sort of thing at the minute so um, I've kept it really simple we've we just do short devotionals on our Facebook page um, so there's a kind of a live half an hour slot we're praying ask people to send in prayer requests bible verses whatever it is I'll read some of that stuff out um, and then just prepared a short 20 minute 15 minute devotional for people um so we also set up a, a church members only page on facebook just to encourage people just to be a bit bolder in some of the prayer requests or if it, there was a personal nature to it just to say to uh, our folk you know this is a safe place um to to continue our community i guess um so we've kind of stuck there i would love to do far more online than we are doing so um i'm hoping in the near future um that our that I can get some guys to help me with um, sort of services pr pretty much like you're doing stream to YouTube 
Um, so, so there's far more that we can do there. Yeah. Um, and also we've got quite a number of older people who are not interested in computers or can't access it, struggle with all that stuff. So I've actually um, played Postman and pretty much every week since lockdown, I've gone around, I think 16 houses, put a letter through the door and um, just been ringing people just to check they're fine. But it, it has been a challenge to try and keep the, those different generations together and mixing and to, to maintain kind of one church. I don't want to be pastor of two churches. So it's kind of, it, that, that's a big challenge really. Um, so yeah, and encouraging people to, to cross those divides and, and make phone calls or do whatever they need to do, call in and see people at a distance and, and um, keep up that contact. Um, we've also, um, one of the better things we've, we've done in, is in terms of outreach, we've run um, Alpha Group um, online and we've done that with another church and that's been fantastically um, successful. I've really enjoyed that. Um, and we, we've seen, I think, the last group we did, we finished with five decisions for, uh, oh, for Jesus. Wow. So that was awesome. And um, we brought along someone who was going to our toddler group um, before lockdown. Um, and she, she made a decision for, for Jesus. So that's fantastic. Um, and so there's there's work to be done there. You know, we're we're born again. So there's a lot of growing we've got to do when we become Christians. So started that process with um, another course, um, Discipleship Explored. I think that's, yeah, that's the one. And um, like everyone else, um, I, I've become quite good at Zoom. So we've, we've had Zoom meetings in between, prayer online. Um, and also we've had... Um, I think it's only one service with with other churches locally that was um on youtube and then a zoom afterwards i think we had 105 screens so wow. we had upwards of 200 people um in one one morning so that was pretty cool and then we have breakout rooms so um so that's a regular part of our church calendar but it was the first time we did it online together so um that's probably about it um, in terms of what we've been up to. Like I say, just main, trying to maintain the togetherness, but also seeing the opportunities to reach out um, and, and Alpha providing a great platform to do that. So a tried and tested method there. Absolutely. My, um, you're the second person I've spoken to who mentioned um, an Alpha course online and um, um, we're considering doing one and kind of... Yeah got the bug really because uh, yeah part of what alpha offers is incredible is that opportunity to to have those questions um answer, yeah um, or put people in a position to ask those questions i heard an incredible stat the other day that 48 percent of the uk population have watched at least one religious service during lockdown yeah. Period. Uh, yeah. so that's nearly 30 plus million people um, yeah. which is staggering considering that I think the yeah. American church have about 2 million members and then yeah. this church denomination in the country um, yeah. that is mind blowing um, and absolutely um, we're looking um, to see what we can do to, to reach out to people and that's kind of been um, the whole reason why we, we did what we did I mean, we started off just over a year ago recording our sermons just so people from um, our church um, could could see sermons and watch the message if they were working yeah. or, or missed a, missed the service. So um, yeah, we were probably a couple of months ahead of you. We, I mean, oh, that's good. Yeah, it's kind of that sense of having someone to help edit the videos because I'm in your boat, mate. Unless it's on an iPhone or an iPad <laughs> or a Mac, that is a really simple process to to learn how to do it. When it comes yeah. to video editing, I haven't got the, the foggiest what to do. Um, <laughs> Uh, I've been blessed with a guy who, who who loves doing it and and serves the church by doing it that way for us. But um, that content just to go out and to see the responses that we've had from some people, um, some literally just people that you wouldn't expect watching the services. Um, and when you're doing something on Facebook Live and you see see who's watching and that name yeah up, you just think, wow, God, you, you, you're you're reaching people that um, yeah I had no idea that that. that that would be interested in church and um yeah spoke to nathan jordan a couple of weeks ago from one church gloucester and he said that online church has now become 
the shop window for for people coming yeah. to church um and yeah. so what we've tried to do with our content is try and keep it as close to what church service would be like um even though we normally film in our lounge as, a, as an yeah. intro um, yeah a bit of worship that is the same um, notices time of communion um and yeah. and and um worship and the word and kind of keep that together so um, and, and it's always then and looking at what the next step is so um i yeah. think we're going to be trying to do some sunday school services that are going to go out online do some family services because um i don't know about you or we haven't got a date when we consider an opening yet because no it, we haven't it's so crazy with with all the the restrictions and the, the requirements yeah. and stuff like that to, to try and do church so yeah it's amazing so obviously you said you had um you've got quite an elderly um population in your in your congregation um yeah and they almost set in the centre sit on one side if i remember when i preached there's and there's <laughs> they have their they have their uh, they have their seats and um i sat next to a, a, an amazing couple who were really really encouraging and, and lovely and, and just gave me the biggest welcome um, and obviously got a bit of a younger um generation of church and so you're navigating you said you don't want to be a part of two churches so how do yeah. you how do you far find that that challenge how and how do you cope with that yeah it's it's an interesting dynamic um i think we are or i'm i'm choosing deliberately to invest more in the younger generations particularly 20 to 30 year olds we've we're we're really lacking so we've got a number of teenagers uh, we've got some families then then there's very little in that 20 to 30s bracket and then we've we've got some middle-aged and, and retired um, people as well so i think i'm starting to see the need for investment with those younger people so we're starting to partner more with um uh, there's a charity locally um, who kind of bring young people together um, and then send them back to their churches. So I want to support that sort of work. And I think we need to sow where we want to reap a harvest. So it's investing relationally in those people, financially um, in those people. And so we're going to make some of those changes. And I think our older folk are wise enough and sensible enough to to understand that we need you know new people coming in um also another outreach which was put on hold during covid but that's a, a baby and toddler group hugely successful um uh, when you hear other people saying it's one of the best in town you kind of think well thank you god that's that's awesome and um we were doing bible studies and stuff with with some of those um parents um pre-lockdown um who are interested in knowing more we're trying to connect through through them we're putting on loads of free events barbecues and and we got some good play equipment i think actually one time you were visiting us you're on your way to pick up some stuff for your um yeah. group so that was it i think the time i, I, I one of the times i came to, to see you um yeah we just picked up some equipment from just outside taunton for um for our stay and play and i mean yeah. I, i've been to your church while stay and play was kind of coming to an end and you're seeing the amount of parents and, and grandparents and carers and kids it was it was a hub of activity um yeah life and we're, we're literally full to the gunnels we can't squeeze any more people in we had to start afternoon sessions because we had um you know we were fully subscribed in the morning Wow. Um, so sadly that's come to an end but obviously we'll we will restart it and it may take a different form we want to keep the essence of what it is um and and serving our, our community in that way um so again investing in in those areas where god seems to be blessing where god seems to be working um and i'm not saying that's not with our older folk but um there's just two examples there where i think just seeing that blessing on some of those outreaches and with some of you know families and stuff um so we need to do more there because that's what i see god doing and we need to bless what he's doing really so um but it but it is honoring everyone and and everyone's got a part to play and so getting that message across at, at the same time i think um and you'd have to speak to my people to see if that's happening or not but um that that's the aim yeah that's brilliant mate that's really really good um 
So how's COVID affected you as a family? What, what's, what's it done for you, you guys as a family? Well, it's driven us mad at times. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's also done a lot of good. Um, so I think when you lead busy lives, um, so Karen was working full time in a school before we did our fostering. And I was obviously full time. I'm, I'm also a governor at a local school, trust you and other couple of charities. So, and, and we're both parents. So life is full. Um, and it's often a struggle to connect with your spouse at the best of times. Um, so I think definitely more connection there has done us a lot of good. And um, I think we've managed to correct a few things. I think we have possibly go in separate kind of directions more or less the same direction but separate ways perhaps and so we've been forced to to come back together and and talk about stuff and and get back on track if you like in more sort of united than before so covid's been great it, you know we've had plenty of hard conversations um but sometimes you've got to lean into those uncomfortable conversations and become comfortable with them um but I, I see it bearing fruit already. And um, also with, with our kids, it's been great to spend time with them. Being on lockdown with two smaller children was not fun um, in the sense that, um, as they say in social work circles, you know, they get dysregulated with change and um, stuff like that. So and there's only so much TV that a person can watch. So it's kind of figuring out stuff for them to do and, and the whole routine thing. So that proper lockdown was hard, um, but that's the same for everyone. So it kind of, um, so it's, it's a mixture of, of good and, and bad. I did get a heck of a lot of DIY done, um, <laughs> which earned me some brownie points. And um it's like those times when you said to said to your other half, you know, when I have time, I'll do that. I'll paint that wall. And then, oops, I have time. <laughs> so there's no wiggling out of it. I did loads of stuff, um, which helped actually keep me sane. Um, and because we didn't go to the shops, I used up a load of stuff in my shed. So I tidied the shed at the same time. I tried to sort of reorganize a few sort of practical areas in my life, I guess. So that helped me, um, helped me stay on the... <laughs> on the on the same side oh excellent are we um we we similar in 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 many ways um obviously we have um two boys um reuben and joel joel's birthday is on friday he turns three but obviously reuben has um additional needs so that was challenging um in even more um so I think COVID just intensified and magnified quite yeah. a lot of things. And um, I, was yeah. talking, I was talking to you just before um, we started about um, Ruben's pattern of going to school. Um, yeah. Actually, he went from full time, five days to three days to two days in the space of four weeks. And by the first week, he'd finished the two, the two days. I mean, he, he wasn't sleeping. He just was sure. all over the place because that route oh. had changed completely for him. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it had been a bit of a journey. So, um, yeah, it's been, um, it's been, in, it's been an interesting one. Um, but yeah, I've, I've managed to get a few jobs done in the house that again, I said, when I've got time, I'll do it. Um, <laughs> in and sorting out the garage and sorting out yeah. the cupboards under the stairs and, and all those bits and pieces yeah. that you always put off to do. And then, actually a bit like covid when the lockdown was really intense it's just like to, for my sanity i needed to do a job so i could just have a bit of of, of, of me time if that was being yeah <laughs> if that's being too, uh, too honest um but yeah just to, just so i i could just get a job done again win some brandy points with the missus but just have a bit yeah. of time where i could put a put a, 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 a podcast on or, or listen yeah to it. just uh just to try and do something to, to give them yeah. get out of that routine. So yeah, incredible. Um, so we've, um, we've talked a lot to kind of about, um, how we, we talked earlier on about how we met and, and, um, we did, um, inspire together. I talked to Nathan about inspire. And I think we must've done our, my first one would have been your second inspire. Um, yeah at the same time and 
I mean, I actually coming up on Inspire, I was a day late because the first day of Inspire was actually Ruben's first birthday. So it was oh, six right. years ago. That's how young, that's oh. how long ago it was. It was six years oh, ago wow. for that Inspire. And that would be right because five years ago you got ordained and then I got ordained for yeah. you. So, um, yeah. so I remember coming up and um, just remember Inspire being such, um, and I'd be cliche, it was an inspiring time. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I remember um, coming away just that week, um, again, building those relationships and, and spending time together and, and sharing and talking, um, but actually just seeing the national leadership team at the time just share their hearts, be open, be honest, do devotionals. Yeah. Um, I remember having question and answer time and you could almost throw mm-hmm. anything at them. Kind of what are your, what are your highlights from, from that period of training? We talked to them about you felt um, underprepared maybe, or he had L plates on, but did that, that time really help, um, help your focus or uh, help you kind of really know that it was a call of God on your life or, what, what, what did God do to you during those times of, of Inspire and stuff like that? Yeah, I think it was partly a call to step out of my comfort zone. I think that's my natural default um, kind of area. Um, <clears throat> in character terms, I, I'm actually more of an introvert. So it's, I've had to learn that actually God's interested in people and, uh, and he, you know, we <laughs> to make a difference, we've got to relate to people we got to spend time with people and so um that's just one of the kind of lessons of my my entire life really um naturally i've you know you'd see me at the back as a teenager back of church i'm quite happy not talking to people playing snooker or something like that and god slowly over time dragged me out of that comfort zone um and so there there was a lot of that element to it Perhaps there was a bit of acceleration in, in God just dragging me out there. Um, I do remember just worshipping him, particularly on the last day of Inspire, um, and just almost like my lungs were bursting, um, tears rolling down my face, just shouting out uh, whatever the song was. And um, just in, incredible times of God's um, presence. Also remember having lunch with people and really good guys just chatting to them and they, you know, start prophesying, you know, speaking God's word and, you know, over me and stuff. So it was just generally in- encouraging um, and, you know, not, not a bad, um, you know, when, when you're paid to be there as well. So, you know, it's all around pretty good. Um, and like you say, some of those speakers, fantastic probably world-class um speakers there um i won't mention names because then other people will get upset but um i guess we we probably all connect differently with different speakers anyway but um certainly i and i love the q and a's i love the openness of um the i think it's mostly men but probably some ladies there men and women um just to answer questions from the floor it spoke a lot I think I think what partly came home to me was that we are the message as as much as what we say. Um, so that would apply to 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 whoever speaks on a Sunday morning in front of a, a a church of people. You know, if I I try and tell tell my guys if they speak, you know, you are the message. So you come prepared, and just people seeing you having spent time with God will bless them before you've even said a word. You know, so. Um, seeing some of those um, guys and just how they conduct themselves, how they talk, how they relate to one another, their openness and that sort of thing, that spoke a message to me as much as what they said. Um, so that was really, that's always inspiring, you know. Absolutely. And I think, and I think it was interesting as well because a lot of those guys that we saw were seasoned ministers they mean experience yeah. leading churches for as probably as long as you and me have been alive some of them yeah um, but to actually understand that some of those challenges some of the journeys that they're walking on when we when they were doing those question answers actually um that it doesn't stop you don't get to a certain point yeah. where you get to being a church leader and you think oh there's no more challenges there's no more 
<laughs> there are things that I need to work through, but actually, but like you said, to see the honesty, to see the openness, to see the vulnerability of sharing some of those experiences. Um, mm. And like you said, the way that they handled themselves, the way that they spoke, the way that they um, shared that um, was was in- incredible to see and um, mm. helped kind of just keep keep focusing on being leaders who are committed to that kind of lifelong journey of, of leading and learning and and serving God that no matter what the, the, the journey that we're on, we can always look back and see where God has brought us from. So yeah. you know, a situation we've been in um, and we've come out and we think, how did I get through that? You can look back and say, only God, only yeah. God can do that. Yeah. And, um, I think that's yeah. one of the things I, I took away is that, you see these seasoned ministers, men and women of God who shared and yeah. um, there was just like, yeah, they've got that. Um, they've got the miles on the clock and they've, they've got the experience and they've got God back in them the whole way. And they, they can see, you can see God's faithfulness and, and bringing them through. doesn't mean that the yeah. time that they had um, aren't as real, um, but actually um, the same God that brought them through when they were in their twenties, thirties, like we're in our thirties now. Um, it's the same goal that's going to be with them and be with us when we've been doing yeah. it, we've been doing well, it for think, years. Yeah, and I think there's, there is a wisdom that you can only get, and I've, I've seen this with other ministers since as well, you can only get when you've walked with, with God for a while and when you've fought some battles and when you've you know killed some bears, if you want to use a kind of David King David analogy. Yeah. Um, and... I think in our culture, we, we love quick fixes and we, you know, we, we, we live in an information rich um, world where we can access, we can find answers on online. Um, but actually what's missing is, um, well, is, is this wisdom that you can only get by actually walking the walk um, and, and not just, you know, and, and living it out rather than just kind of searching for, for answers. So there's there's a kind of a depth, I think, to to the people I admire. And you don't get there. There's no shortcuts to it. <laughs> it's just about doing life with God every day, faithfully, doing the basic things in life, isn't it? Um, yeah. Becoming excellent at those basic things. And I think over time, it just, it's it's really obvious. Um, so So the people I admire, of finishing well you know and anyone can start a race well but finishing is a different matter and so i i personally want to finish the race um and yeah you, you've got to pace yourself you've got to take the long view um but they're, they're the type of um people that i i seriously admire Excellent. so good obviously um we have been um uh, driving buddies for the last couple of conferences i think that we've we've been on yeah um unfortunately i read the email this week that we can't be going um to our Indeed. conference um yeah obviously um conference i think especially last year was um being uh, being a, obviously the, the first conference with our new national leader and stuff like that there was a, a, a real different feel and vibe to, to conference and i'm gutted that we're not being able to to meet um, and gather um, again. Yeah. But looking yeah. forward to to hopefully and um, praying that it will be um, be in May when we can gather again. If um, we can actually actually do that, that would be great. Um, what's yeah. um, obviously we've had it's just coming to a bit of a close now because it's it's been probably about an hour since we spoke. So I don't want to take up too much of your your precious time. Um, no, that's good. Just before we um, we kind of come to the final bit and i'll get you to pray for people and, and kind of share um you and i are obviously both leaders we go to probably quite a few conferences and, and different seminars and stuff like that um as a as a leader what what are you looking for what are you hoping to get out of those things when you go do you go with a, a kind of a list of god i want you to speak to me about this or um do you go kind of with just an open heart and say um, God, what are you wanting to say? Because you you shared a little bit already today and, and kind of where your comfort zone is about you like to think about things quite a lot before you make a decision. So going to yeah. a conference, going to um, a seminar, what, how do you go prepared or do you 
or are you still kind of your mind racing and, and, and buzzing? I only say that because I remember the last conversation we had driving up to, to Bradford. I mean, I remember spending, I think, from Tamworth to Bradford, you just had something and we were just literally chewing the fat off it for the whole time because it was just kind of this, this thing that was going around. So how do you go, how do you go to a conference and, 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 and ex- what are you expecting God to say? How do you, how do you go prepared? Yeah, I think at different points in my life is the answer, you know, it's been different things, different answers. Um, I think generally speaking, I used to, I still love information. I think I've, I've, probably a teacher by nature or, or gifting. So I, I, I love absorbing new information, new ideas. And, and as you say, I love thinking about it all. Um, but I think in more recent years, um, my emphasis has been on transformation more than information. And so I think I want to, I want to go and I want to meet God. And that's probably number one thing. Um, so I'm always seeking an encounter with God. I'm always seeking more of his presence, more of his Holy Spirit. Um, so that's that's a kind of number one prayer. And conference can be a great time to, to really push into some of that stuff, maybe when you've got some other distractions um, out of the way. Also, I, I'm lately, it's, again, it's all about relationship and who you know and what not what you know. And so just asking God just to help me with that stuff and, and build and invest in, in good relationships. Um, so, and, you know, partly to get out of my comfort zone to do that, but that's, that's the thing when we, when we come to the end of our lives, we, we can look back and we're going to go, I was rich or I was poor. And I think we're going to measure it in the love that was shared within relationships and the people that are rich are those people that, um, have loads of friends who have loads of family who have other people's children calling them mum and dad not just your own biological kids and and it's the people that we've managed to bless and, and impact and I, I think that will determine uh whether we're rich or poor whether we've had a good life or not whether we've made the most of what we've had it will be the quality of those relationships and, and how much love has been shared um and so can't remember where I was going with that but that's so yeah if, if I can do anything today or um, whenever I'm with a, a group of, of leaders Christians to invest in them even people who, who don't know God if I can bless them in some way if I can give people hope or um, hear from God myself that's a good day you know so that was a really long answer to your question, but um, essentially I want to meet God. I want to hear from God, um, be challenged in some of my thinking. I'm, I want transformation. I want to be more like Jesus. Um, secondly, um, I want to connect more with people. And I'm learning that other people, you know, my destiny, if you like, is is kind of linked with other people and I'll never get there on my own. So it's about trusting God to bring the right people along who will really um, speak into my life, bless me as well, and, and my family, of course. Um, and I'll probably say, Mark, that you've, you've been that person um, on, a, on a few occasions for me. And uh, like I said earlier, inspiring. Um, just love your heart, going after, you know, the loss and just, you know, not being ashamed of the gospel, sharing the gospel whenever you can um that's been really inspiring and so that's helped me i think do the same and i just love the way you mingle as well at conference like you never stand <laughs> you off. I'm, I'm, I'm off it, I'm, that's, that's why i go to conference with uh, without lydia she wouldn't be able to yeah. so um I, she she says that i am um, i'm the biggest um social person at conference yeah you know. yeah I, I, I just love it they say at conference seeing all of guys and women and um, men and women that you did um you did inspire with or you've you've done area days or zone days and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. um and it's just great to spend time um with them because you want to just invest into people's lives and that relationship that you want them to invest and pour something back in you and i love what you just shared about wanting to impart something into people um, and I've really been challenged with that. I'm, I'm doing a, a series currently on a, on a 
during I was preaching to us during lockdown, um, looking at the book of James and looking at um, how practical that book is. Um, just yeah. just finished um, James chapter three, the first kind of thirteen verses, where it's all about taming the tongue and just the practicalities of what you yeah. speak. And are you going to speak? Is it going to be something that is when you speak? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Is it true? Um, yeah. I want to speak that. I want to speak life into people. So that's why I'll, yeah. I'll get around as many people as I can, um, yeah. and bless them and encourage them and 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 glean from from them what what they're doing. Because you go around and you speak to some of the guys and you, you hear what God is doing and it stretches your faith mm. and it encourages you and it it yeah. builds you up. Um, there was something that you said in in your long question. That I thought that would be a really good question to ask. Um, and it's kind of now just gone out of my head. Um, I was thinking, what was it that I said? Let me... So I remembered what the question was. Um, you shared just before, you said, so the main priority when you go to church is you want to press into God. And you fell and you feel at conferences and stuff like that, you can press in more because you um, maybe don't have much responsibility. I know, being a church leader here, I feel a huge amount of responsibility when the service is on, um, when making sure that everything's okay, that the word is okay, the worship and the, the sound and everything, because everyone looks to you at the end of the day. Yeah. And I remember, I'll throw that question at you, but I remember when I preached at your church, I think it was for the second time, um, or the first time, I can't remember now, um, I remember I had a prophetic word for one of the ladies that was leading worship um, yes. before I got up to speak um, I just had to share this word that God had given me during the worship um, yeah. and it's not to say that I don't always get that during a church service but I think because I have like I said all that weight of responsibility I can't I find it difficult to really engage in worship fully like I do at conference like you do are you, do you yeah. similar to, to, to that what you experience yeah absolutely um and it is a challenge in a smaller church where perhaps we're stretched for human resources and you know one or two people are doing several roles um i certainly feel that and um i'd i'd love it to to be you know slightly different in our in our place but yeah i'm if there's something goes wrong on the pa desk or the words don't work or whatever it's a total distraction for me and um and then i don't hear god because i'm focusing on that um so there's any number of distractions or maybe there's visitors coming late and then i'm seeing their family of five and there's only like there's no seats five together so then i'm worrying is anyone else going to see this and like take the initiative and move so there's all that sort of stuff that just goes through your head quite frequently oh, uh, i'm glad i'm not the only one <laughs> no, you're not, you're not the only one, mate. yeah you're not the only one so like you say when you go somewhere else it's you can you definitely can focus more and um i found as well when i'm anxious i don't hear god um and so maybe leaving some responsibility behind makes it easier to hear god um and jesus when you think about it, even jesus took himself took a you know took himself away to pray um you know he wasn't out of relationship but he just paused from some of those things to take that time to, to be with father god so if he did it um we it's uh, it's a good idea for us to do it as well and and yeah i think you know conference is never a, a a natural time if you like it's not normality we don't live in a conference type um situation um you know normality is is the everyday stuff but it's it's good to to go there sometimes and um just leave you know responsibilities it's great not to worry about the words and you know who's going to turn up or not turn up and all that stuff so it's it's great to be able to have those times to to just receive a bit more and, and hear from god absolutely and it's in those times when like you see you don't have those responsibilities um and those anxious kind of and that worry just what, what how's the service going to go have they have people seen all of that stuff i'm probably in, in a similar position that hearing from god i probably hear from god clearer at conference because i don't have that responsibility but again yeah 
you're not in that conference lifestyle every day because no. 362 days of the year, not take the three days of conference out, you, you're in normality. You're not, yeah. So you can't live in that way. Um, I remember um, last year, and you kind of just um, reminded me um, while we just took that short pause for me to remember what my question was um, that actually you beat me in the kind of the, the social repairing and relationship status. Um, I remember at a conference last year, we got up there, we generally travel the day before because you want to have a good night's sleep and be refreshed. Yeah. And go. We went out for a nice curry um, with, um, mm. with a couple of uh, friends of mine. And yeah. I, uh, I'm sat, we register, we're looking, trying to get in. I'm going around seeing who's got in. I go in to grab a coffee and then you're sat with my mate, Glenn, um, friends of his from Wales, and then you're sat with the new national leader having a coffee with this massive grin on your face when I come <laughs> over to sit. So it's just like, that was... Um, that was, that was, that's I out, out-mingled you, Mark. That you was, out-mingled me. Uh, I did enjoy that moment. Yeah, I know, mate. That, that smile on your face was there for, for everyone to see. That was that was brilliant. Um, <laughs> mate, I just want to encourage you um, as well. You've um, been so gracious to, to share um, about kind of the inspiration that you get from me, and I, I don't know how, but um, <laughs> you have this um, calming um, characteristic that, um, I mean, like nothing phases you. And we've talked about some stuff um, only last few days and, and some weeks ago, um, some situations and stuff that, that we've been going through, you've been going through. Um, and just want to encourage you and bless you that you are one of the closest friends that I have in the ministry that I can share stuff with and know that um, when you say, mate, I'll be praying for you, I know you're praying for me. And it's not just... Yeah, uh, thanks, Mark. It's not just, oh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pray for you or I'll send a quick text. Mm. I know that it's it, it's it's meant, and um, mate, I'm I'm praying that God would open up all of those doors where you are investing in um, with young people and with um, those twenties to thirties. You want to see that that generation yeah. come in, um, our generation. We want to see our mm. generation come to know Jesus, yeah. Lord and Savior. Um, I'm going to give you two more questions, um, yeah, and then I'll get you to pray for us. Um, what have you felt God been saying to you during this time of lockdown? Is question number one. Uh, on, a, on a personal level or to, to the church? or? Well, the, the second question is to the church. So let's okay. what's on, on, on a personal level first. Um, <clears throat> I think God has reminded me that my identity is not in what I do, but it's in who I am. And... Um, we see this in, in the scripture as well. Jesus, you know, received those words from at his baptism. You know, I'm well pleased with you, my beloved son, along those lines. And yet he hadn't started his ministry yet. He hadn't actually healed anyone, hadn't done anything. And Jesus was incredibly secure in who he was. Um, so that when the devil tempted him, you know, he, he just responded with the word of God. Devil was trying to say, if you are the son of God. And Jesus was like, no, I know who I am. And I don't need to answer to you. And I don't need to prove anything to you. And so he was totally at rest in who he was. And also when you think about it, in the, in the days of creation, um, Adam and Eve were created on day six. So they woke up on day seven. And God had already given them a job to do, tend the garden, look after creation, etc., etc. And... On day seven, God had a surprise for him. I kind of imagine Adam being on the, the start line of the race and he's waiting for the gun to go and he's just warming up and limbering up and like, you know, when can I get going in this perfect world? And I've, I've now got this perfect lady next to me and, you know, let's do this thing. And then <clears throat> I kind of imagine God tapping him on the shoulder and going, actually, we're going to rest today, you know. And, and as someone who's a, a doer by nature, um, resting is really hard. Um, and so... They, they had to learn pretty quickly that their identity uh, was not in what they did, uh, what they got done. It wasn't in their performance, but it was in their, um, in who they were. And um, I think God's reminded me of that. There's so much we don't have control of. I don't have control of. There's so much I can't do. Um, and we can't do ministry how we used to do ministry. And yet, God's still pleased. And um, so that's, that's been a good reminder that I don't need to be constantly doing. I can also 
try and enjoy some time at a slower pace of life and um, not feel bad about it, basically. That's amazing. Um, so kind of, I'll add another thing onto what you feel God's been saying to the church specifically, but what are you hoping to do or planning when you can reopen? Because I don't think we can go back to the way that we did church before. I think God, uh, we've been praying as, as, a, nation, as a nation, we've I've seen so many prayer movements, praying, asking God for an awakening, um, asking God for, yeah. for this nation. We've been forced to do online church or some form of online church. And I know you explored yeah. that and wanting to go deeper in that. Um, but I mean, the church broke Zoom a few weeks ago. Yes. Zoom, Zoom servers crashed because there was more people yeah. watching church on Zoom than anything else. Um, yeah. So what do you feel God's been saying to you um, as a church leader and, and, and as your church? But also, what are you hoping to see or you, what are you planning for? when you can um, come back and gather again, what are you hoping to, to implement and do and run with when you get back to church? I think um, when we come back to church, I want us to, I think we're going to take our, our, I think we're going to wait on God more. We're going to not be so arrogant with our own ideas, um, running into our own schedules. I think often we've been guilty at our church anyway of saying to God, really move lord speak to us but you've only got 90 minutes to do so and i think um so i think we're going to be far more fluid far more flexible far more open to, to the holy spirit's leading also want us to be more relational together um and that's that's lockdown has highlighted how important relationships are and how much we we need one another god calls us into a community into a family um and that's partly how we grow and so i just want to find more ways that we can connect as a church family together um become more relational i want ministry not just to flow from the front but just to be between people um so i've got various ideas there and i think god's maybe his biggest message throughout the whole thing is perhaps so obvious that we forget about it or we look past it and i think god's big message to church is that the church is not a building and you are the church and I want you out of the building and I want you where people are. And that's partly why we do online stuff because that's where people are. They spend a huge amount of time online. And so as a church, we've got to be online too in order to reach those people. Um, but also coming out of lockdown, I, I imagine there's going to be economic difficulties for a lot of people. There's going to be mental health difficulties. There's going to be relational difficulties you know, unfortunately, domestic violence has, has gone up during lockdown. So there's a huge amount of challenges um, in our culture, in our society. And I think the church, we have to be ready to meet some of those challenges to serve our community. You know, would our communities notice if if we weren't there? Would they notice if our building was closed? Um, you know, that these are all questions that I, I feel we need to answer. Um, but I, I also think there's there's a sense of humility and we need to walk humbly with the with the Lord our God and seek his answer. Uh, one challenge that I've reflected on recently in I think it's Revelation 3, 1 to 6, Jesus is speaking to the church at Sardis and he says, you have a reputation of being alive um, before men and yet you're dead. So how can it be that people, a group of people, no less, not even one person who's a bit scatty, but how can a whole church think they're doing well? How can people around that church think they're doing well? And yet Jesus looks at the same church and goes, actually, guys, you're dead. You need to wake up. And so just those different standards that we have, um, does God weigh more than he counts? You know, how do we measure success? What are we looking for versus what does God look for? um so all those sort of questions questions weighing on on my mind and i think we need humility to to hear from god um first and foremost before we can make any difference you know we we need that we need to hear him before we can obey him but then we need to obey him in, in the power of the holy spirit so uh again it's a long-winded answer sorry mark but um yeah 
so that's just some of the some of the stuff I've been thinking about anyway. Mate, that is absolutely a fantastic answer to my incredible question. Um, so, um, could you do us a great um, pleasure of praying for us and um, those who are watching, those who might want to be liking and sharing this video and sharing it with their friends and and and, and others to to maybe watch. Um, could you just pray for us that whatever you feel the Holy Spirit just lead, just to pray. Um, and I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll close after that. Thank you, mate. Yeah, I'd love to. Lord, I, th I thank you for this time together uh, with Mark, with those watching. God, we, we do just put ourselves in your hands again. We do just say, uh, be our God. Lord, will, will you take that place? Will you lead us? Lord, and, and I pray that we'll serve you. I pray that we'll hear from you. Lord, may it never be the other way around where we expect you to serve us. But God, we just want to walk humbly with you. Uh, we just want to recognize that you're everything and, and you lack nothing. And uh, Lord, you don't sleep. And um, we need sleep. And uh, God, you can survive, you know, without us, Lord. But we can't survive without you. So, Lord, I, I just pray that you would take us to new places. I pray that we would um, just step into new areas of, of ministry, that we would step into um, who you've really made us to be. Lord, I pray against fear. I pray for boldness, Lord God, to, to take your word to those who don't know it, to, to share our faith. Lord, I, I pray for, for more boldness for Mark. Lord, I, I love how bold he is already, but God, will you give him more? Will, will the church in Dorchester be marked by um, incredible boldness in, in sharing you, in praying for people, in, in seeking you and seeing you move? So, Lord Jesus, just bless them with that boldness I, I i pray for mark's own family lord that you just um pour out your favor on them just do them good lord jesus just refresh them um keep them close together lord i thank you for the blessing that they are um to the church but lord and i, and I pray for the wider church family lord that you'd give them grace to um to to stay of one accord to, to be united to get behind mark and 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 to encourage him and lord just build them up father i just look forward to hearing stories of of what you're doing in dorchester and, and around um, the county just um just build them up lord jesus add to their number um daily father i just pray for for miracles and uh, wonders in that place we just want to see you move we want to see that town change we want to see that community come alive in you so lord just redeem um that town redeem the culture redeem um you know the, the things that used to be dedicated to to the enemy god i just pray that that people would turn and dedicate themselves to you and uh that you just i just pray for times of refreshing to come and uh, visitation lord visit that that town that place lord that's that's what we want god we want uh 100 transformation so lord just bless them and um just build them up in in their faith and i just want to thank you for them lord amen amen bless you mate appreciate it so much thank you everyone who has been watching thank you uh, for tuning in um hope and pray there's been a blessing i've been probably in the chat section as you've been watching this just seeing how um, we've responded um if you want to um ask us any questions or you have a prayer request please send your prayer requests into prayer.thestorehouse at gmail.com. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to connect with you. Um, I'll, send, um, I'll put the, the link and description in for um, the Sims uh, uh, Church's pay, um, Facebook page in so you can see where they, they are and, and see what his devotionals and stuff like that. So if um, you can just tune in and, and like their page, that would be great for them. So bless you guys. Thank you so much. And um, we'll see you in the next In Conversation with you.